This video is sponsored by Squarespace. What do I have here? This is the XP Pen Artist 10. And in order to test it out, I need your help. Give me a three word drawing prompt. So you guys gave me some really good ones here. There's also a lot of references to wolves. You folks doing okay? I like this one, Cat Sword Mountain. So what I'm gonna be doing today is I'm going to be doing this drawing challenge and I'm gonna be letting you know how the Artist 10 performs while I'm doing it. Now the tablet here was provided by XP Pen. This is not sponsored by XP Pen, it's sponsored by Squarespace. And so all the thoughts on it are my own. First up, the Artist 10 is the smallest pen display that XP Pen makes. In fact, this is the smallest pen display I think any manufacturer makes. That also makes it one of the cheapest ones out there. You can pick one of these up for around $170. Now that is a good price for this little guy. You can also find 12 inch displays from Huion or XP Pen for around the 200 to $250 range. So what you're doing here is you're giving up some of that screen real estate and some of that size to save a few bucks. Now for what it's worth, when I was doing research for this video a few days ago, I noticed that the XP Pen Artist 12, which of course is like two inches bigger, was the same exact price. It was on sale on XP Pen's website. So it might be worth checking out the sales before you pull the trigger on this one. As you can tell, this thing has a screen. It's like a little monitor, plugs into your computer. So you're gonna need a Windows or a Mac computer in order to use it. It also works on Android, so we'll have to check that out too. I'm gonna start by sketching out some of my ideas. I like the idea of making a mountain with a giant sword on it covered in cats, even though that's the reason I picked this word. As I started sketching it out and, and playing with the idea a little bit, I was having a hard time really bringing that to life. So I went with something a little more in line with what I usually draw. I ended up coming up with a battle cat who had his own store that lived in the mountains. Maybe dress him up in some mountain looking kind of clothes. Also, heads up, if you already have my intro to digital art course, I added this sketch into the sketches folder. So if you want to practice along, it's in there. Since this is the smallest pen display out there, I wanted to know is it too small? So setting up my tools and my brushes and my layers in Photoshop, that wasn't too bad, especially in Windows, which is more of a touch-based interface. So it's more designed for this sort of thing. But once I got into Photoshop, doing things like changing brush sizes and, and hitting some of those tiny little hit areas, that's where things got a little bit more complicated. It was a little touch and go. Sometimes I had no problem at all. Other times I was having trouble hitting some of those smaller areas. So of course, the first thing I did when I set this thing up was use the keyboard commands in order to change my brush sizes so I didn't have to deal with that. Fortunately here, there's also six hotkeys along the side of this thing. Those are obviously completely customizable in the settings. So as you can see here, I'm moving along at a pretty good clip with the line art now that the sketch is done. Sketching on this was pretty easy because you're moving pretty fast. You're using a pencil and you're just trying to capture our ideas. Once you get into the line art is where you start to see the differences between say this tablet versus something like a Wacom tablet, which is gonna have better pen lines. But before I dive too deep into that, I probably should talk about what comes in the box. We of course have the tablet itself. It comes in different colors. This one is obviously blue. I have some of XP Pen's other products that come in similar colors. Surprisingly, I like this little green one. I usually don't like green. I did like it here. I also have a pink version. Uh, if you're into that, it's, a, it's not a bad pink. And also there's a blackish gray version as well. This comes with a three in one cable. One side goes goes into the tablet and the other side has three connections. One of those connections is for power. The other one is an HDMI connector that goes directly into your computer. And the third one is a USB cable that goes also directly into your computer. But, and this is kind of cool, if you have a USB-C port on your computer, you can use just one cable. You don't have to plug it into power. You don't have to do all that extra stuff. One cable and you are done. That's how I've connected mine here. And I find this to be really handy. This also makes it super portable. So you could take this tablet and throw it in your laptop bag with just the cable and the pen and you can take it anywhere. You could also do that with the three in one cable, but you also have to keep in mind that you have to find a way to power this as well, which makes it, you know, a little less portable. Now the biggest bummer here, and I think the biggest missed opportunity here is that XP Pen doesn't include the USB type C cable in the box. That could be because they're finding many of their customers don't have USB type C connectors yet. So I kind of understand it, but 
still, that's going to be an additional $20 on their website to get what I think is one of the best features of this tablet. Okay, now that that's out of the way, I could talk about this pen. This uses XP Pen's newish X3 technology. Now, there are pros and cons to these pens. The pros being that the initial activation rate is it's pretty good, but the trade-off is that I find there is some wobble to the pen and you don't really have to look that hard for it. You can really see it when you're drawing slow angled lines. Sometimes your hand is gonna have some natural wobble to it, but sometimes it is the pen. And when the pen has some wobble, it looks a little more mechanical. For me, this is really just on the edge of acceptable. And the, and the main reason I say that is if you have a drawing program that has smoothing, Photoshop has line smoothing, you can turn that off or turn that on, I should say, and get rid of a lot of that. Also, you could get rid of it by drawing a lot faster. Uh, sometimes I draw quickly, sometimes I draw slow if I'm trying to get little detail lines in there, which is why I like to get like a smoother line naturally from my pen. This pen also has 8,000 levels of pressure sensitivity and 60 degrees of tilt, which is pretty much the industry standard nowadays for pens. It is a pretty lightweight pen. It's also a skinnier pen. Some people like the fatter pens. Personally, I've gotten used to the skinnier pens. It also includes a little clicky shortcut button along the side if you're into that sort of thing. The screen itself looks good too. This is a full HD screen. That's 1920 by 1080. And when you get it down to this 10 inch size, it looks really crisp. I also think the colors look pretty good. This is a laminated screen, so there's also not a lot of parallax between where the pen tip is and where the cursor appears underneath it. It does other things well too, like the viewing angles are solid. It's not really crummy. The build quality feels good and solid. So if you do throw it in your bag, it's not gonna crack or, or break unless you really slam your bag against something. It can be hard to navigate Windows and Mac OS with just the pen because the screen is pretty small but you could definitely do it. You know what else you could definitely do? You could definitely check out today's sponsor, Squarespace. You probably already know that Squarespace is the all-in-one platform for building the ultimate website for your brand or business, but it's also one of the best ways to engage with your audience. Squarespace has member areas. This makes it easy for creators to monetize their content and expertise in a way that fits their brand. With member areas, you can unlock a new revenue stream for your business and free up time in your schedule by selling access to things like gated content, videos, online courses, or even newsletters. And you can customize all of this to fit your brand with Squarespace's best-in-class website templates. Browse the category of your business to find the perfect starting place. And see how well your business is performing with Squarespace's analytics. Learn where your site visits and sales are coming from. And analyze which channels are the most effective. Improve your website and build a marketing strategy based on top keywords and the most popular products and content. Go to squarespace.com for a free trial. When you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash to save 10% on your first purchase of a website or domain. What about Android? So I hooked this up to an Android tablet to give it a go. It works okay. From a drawing standpoint, it does what it says it does. There are some downsides. For example, shortcut keys are not gonna work on Android. But I think the biggest problem is Android apps are designed for a touch screen. This is not a touch screen. So Android apps are just designed for you to be pinching and zooming in and out or be using fingers for shortcuts and that sort of thing. So you're gonna be drawing on one thing and then constantly moving back to your phone or tablet to do other things. And that back and forth is just a kind of a clunky experience. I wouldn't recommend this if you're only gonna use it on Android, but if you're traveling and you wanna draw on the go when you're away from your, say, home PC, it's totally fine for that. All right, drum roll. My mountain cat swordsman is done. I'm okay with it. I, I don't think it's great. I, I, I kinda wanna go in and play with the lighting more, but I think for like a one day experience to test this thing out, it works. And I think that's a good metaphor for this tablet in general. It's not mind-blowingly great, but I think for the price, it's good. It's a lot easier to draw on something that has a screen on it than say something that is a screenless tablet. And I think this price puts it at an entry level range for a lot of beginners and artists who wanna just get into the space and get drawing without having to learn a lot of things you have to learn if you're getting a screenless drawing tablet. And for those beginners, I think this is a really good value and I don't have a problem recommending it. I think if you're a pro, if you're used to Wacom or even Huion's pens or that sort of thing, you're probably gonna get frustrated by the pen a little bit. You're probably gonna be frustrated by the smaller size. So I would have a harder time recommending it to maybe a professional who's been in the space for a while. Uh, but overall, you know, it's not bad. 
What do you think? Let me know down below in the comments. Thank you all for watching, and I'll talk to you in a couple of days.